It's Monday, and that means it's time for a new episode of Interviewing People, the career cast where you can learn about a variety of careers from people actually doing the work. Today I'll be talking with Abby Mingus Doan, who once walked these halls but is now a senior marine mammal trainer at the Indianapolis Zoo. Abby will be sharing about her path to becoming an animal trainer and much more, so enjoy the show. So welcome back to another episode of Interviewing People, and today we have Abby Doan with us, and she is a senior animal trainer at the Indianapolis Zoo. So she's going to be talking a little bit about what she does uh, in that career and what a marine biology major could do in addition to what she's currently doing. So Abby, thank you very much for joining us today. And I guess I'd love for you to just start out by talking a little bit about how did you decide that you wanted to go into marine biology? Uh, I think a lot of it started because I had never seen the ocean. You know, I had watched National Geographic and Discovery Channel and living in the Midwest my whole life. I just, it was so, such a curiosity to me that then I just became kind of obsessed with it. Um, and I learned everything I could about the ocean and dolphins were like my thing. I would draw them all the time in my notes. Like it was just dolphins all the time. Um, and as I got older, um, I was very fortunate that my parents were supportive. They didn't know what to tell me. And like you know, <laughs> Van Buren didn't know what to tell me. They're like, I don't know, you live in cornfields. Like, I don't know. So I was very fortunate that people were very su supportive and helped me um, kind of figure out what to do with all that passion that I had for the ocean. Um, so I don't know really where it came from other than my brain was just like, I just want to know everything about it. And then it just kind of spiraled from there. Right. Have you always felt like science was the area that you really excelled in in school or? Yeah, yeah. I was always interested in all things sciencey. Um, I really, yeah, I just dug into all that stuff. I, I love not just ocean stuff. I mean, I loved anatomy and physiology. I loved animal stuff. I loved plants. I just, anything science, I just couldn't get enough of. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of worked out too. So how did you decide to go to BGSU? Did you look at other schools that were on the coasts, close to water? Was Lake Erie something that, uh, because we're close to that, that BGSU does work there? Uh, you know, I guess I wouldn't think of BGSU as a marine biology hotbed. Mm -hmm. So how did you choose that school and, and what impacts did that have on you? Uh, I did look, I looked on the coast, I, I looked at Texas A&M, I was pretty sure that's where I was going to go, um, but then as it came time to figure out that that was going to cost some money, um, <laughs> <laughs> in-state seemed like a much better option, and um, really I had no idea, but um, Bowling Green and Ohio University both had marine science programs, who knew? Um, <laughs> So, but I visited Bowling Green and they had an actual marine lab. So they had like 40 aquariums that students could help take care of. And you learn a lot about animal husbandry. Um, they had, they didn't have a marine biology major at the time. They had like a, they were in the works of making a specialization. So um, they have um, Dr. Mike McKay who is, is a marine biologist and he was helping to oversee that program and get that kind of going. Um, and they do a lot of freshwater biology, of course, on the Great Lakes. Lake Erie is an awesome resource. And the, the same things that you would do in, in freshwater um, science, you, you would still apply for marine science. And then they also had a, um, a conjunction with the university down in Louisiana, and or excuse me, Mississippi, and they would do, uh, you could take courses there and get BG credit. Um, so it kind of just perfect that they had that developing program going and it was very close to home and I, I loved it. I would recommend it to everyone. And I think now it is an actual specialization that you, you can get. Um, I don't think it's a degree, but I believe it's a, a biology with a specialization in marine science. Okay. So did you actually go down to Mississippi to take some classes or were those classes online or how did that work? Um, students did go. I did not take any of those courses. Um, by the time it came time for me to decide what I wanted to do, I was really into the animal husbandry aspect. Um, so I did, um, I did internships and, and volunteering and stuff with 
with animal care positions. Um, but if someone wanted to study marine biology, I would definitely recommend that they do take some of those courses because you are that they're going out on boats. There were, you know, shark biology classes. There were marine mammal classes. There was all kinds of things that they would do actual field work. Um, I did do, we had um, a professor who uh, he studied in the Outer Banks and he grew up in the Outer Banks in North Carolina. So I did go there for a trip and we applied some of the stuff that we learned. Um, and that was um, just kind of all condensed in a week's time. But yeah, by the, by the time I decided what I wanted to do, it just didn't it didn't apply really to me to go down there, but it was an awesome resource and I right. believe they still do it. Right. So you've mentioned husbandry a few times and can you just explain what that means? Yeah, that's just taking care of something, but taking care of animals. So um, anything that's involved in their actual um, things that, uh, you know, cleaning their environment, feeding them, training them, um, which is a little different than like veterinary care. Like I do some tasks that help aid the veterinarians and, and I can do things like collect voluntary um, medical samples and things like that. But my, my main job is to take care of them um, directly every day. And that, that's kind of husbandry is the all encompassing kind of term. Okay. So in 2007, you did a, an internship with the Navy mm -hmm. uh, in their marine mammal program. And can you talk a little bit about how you found out about that, how you became involved with that, and what you did in that internship? Sure. Um, I got involved with that through the university. So um, another one of my classmates, she had, she had found out about it somehow. So she actually did it the year before I did, the summer before I did. Um, and so um, it was an amazing internship. We were out in San Diego and we had to get like super security clearance. It felt like super cool. You know, we got to go and get like the little special badge. Um, but they train, they, they train a lot of animals to help um, with some tasks. So they, they have dogs that they train. And then of course the Navy is going to be involved with aquatic environments. Um, so uh, dolphins and sea lions can do some tasks just like a, you would have a, a dog, an assistance dog do. Um, so nothing like dangerous. I, there's like a lot of things out there where it's like they go and set off bombs. That's not what they do. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're trained to detect if maybe there's an enemy diver in the area. They, they can use sonar and sea lions have low light vision. So just using their adaptations to the environment to, to, help, um, to help the Navy. So um, I just got to kind of see the, the animal trainers aspect of that, like how you would condition them, how you would do that training for something that's pretty complex, you know, so it was just a really neat perspective on, on training that um, not a lot of people get a chance to see, but yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, and San Diego is a great place to be too. Oh, so. Yes. <laughs> so when you finished college in 2008, it looks like you went directly to the Indianapolis Zoo. Were there a lot of openings for positions like yours uh, as an animal trainer or was that something that was pretty scarce and, and mm -hmm. it worked out well that you were able to go to Indianapolis? How did that work? So the timing was kind of perfect. So after the, the summer after I graduated, I actually did an internship here at the zoo. So those positions, we typically have um, about four, maybe five intern spots in the summer. Um, and those can get pretty competitive, um, but there are at least, you know, there are at least four or five positions every summer, and that's a 12-week program. And then um, I completed my internship, went back home, uh, volunteered at Toledo for a little bit, and then luckily I was fresh enough in their minds that when a position opened up, some of the trainers called me and they were like, hey, you should put in your resume, like we're going to get in here. So, um having an actual paid position is pretty spare, sparse, especially in the Midwest, because, you know, those of us who are here, we're not here for the scenery. We're here because our families are nearby. Um, I would love to live in California and Florida, but <laughs> I love my family. So they're here. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, those of us who are here, we typically stay for a while. Yeah. So really it was just timing. Okay. How many trainers are there at the Indianapolis Zoo? I believe there are 14 of us right okay. now. Yeah, okay. we take care of 12 dolphins, um, seven sea lions, and two gray seals. Okay, and it looks like there's a seating area back there that mm -hmm. you guys have daily shows. Yep. And, and 
and you are. you are the one who's doing uh, the training to uh, get the animals to do what they need to do and so yep. forth. Yeah. Yep. So we do public presentations and then we, we that's like our time to showcase the animals and then the rest of the day we're working on training and vet checkups and just things like that. Right. How long does it take to train, say, a dolphin to do something? It depends. It depends mostly on the person. Um, dol the dolphins are super smart. Um, it's usually if they're taking a while, we usually give ourselves a, a six month time frame to train something. And if it's taking longer than that, then we kind of get together and be like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what am I not communicating to the dolphin? Um, so we use these whistles and we train them that when we blow the whistle, that means good job. So we really just use little baby steps to train some things. We right. blow, you have to blow your whistle at the right time, you know, and if they're whistling while they're wiggling their flipper, they might be like, well, which thing did she want? And then they might go off on a tangent, you know, and be doing something else. So um, I would say on average, it probably takes, oh, about a month or so, you know, and like I said, beyond that, then you start to question like, what, what's going on or if it's something that's just not compatible with what they want to do um, they all have likes and dislikes too so right. if it's clear that it's you know like nova she's one of our dominant females she doesn't love to flip around it's important important for her to have exercise and get that body movement but if she doesn't want to do a front flip like what's the point you know then let's let's find another way to move her body around so that right. can be a good way for them to communicate to us like i don't really want to do that <laughs> now if someone uh ended up with a marine biology degree didn't want to do the uh, animal husbandry or the training and so forth what are some other options that someone could do with a marine biology degree so there there's a lot of things of course you could do uh the research route so you know, research from the smallest organisms up to the largest organisms. Um, there, I know a lot of marine biologists go into kind of a consultant role for some companies who may want to see like what kind of impact are we going to have on the environment that so we can consult an expert who might know, um, you know, working for something like the EPA or, or something like that. But um, I think it just kind of depends on what the interest is mm -hmm. of the individual, but I it's a pretty, I mean, it's a big environment and there's so many aspects of it that a biologist in general can, can really kind of go in any direction. Right, right. Very cool. So we've talked about branding in our classes about how people can take control of how others see them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that you went straight from college into your uh, position, well, I guess you did have the internship in there and you did a little bit at Toledo. Yeah. Um, I guess, what do you feel like you've done as a marine biologist and as an animal trainer to show your value to, um, you know, the Indianapolis Zoo there as when you were an intern uh, so that they said, yeah, we want to hire her. We, we need Abby Doan uh, as a trainer at our zoo. Um, I think the first thing that helps set you apart is... Um, to have to have a well-rounded resume um, so getting experience as early on as possible so um, a lot of zoos you can't get experience until you're 18 because you know you're working directly with, with animals it's their collection um, but things like the humane society just showing your employer that you're you don't mind picking up poop and doing all the nitty gritty <laughs> stuff because it's not just, you know, like, ta-da, like we're doing all this wonderful stuff. Like my job's gross, I stink, <laughs> you know, I'm covered <laughs> in fish every day. And uh, just showing that like, this is somebody who's gonna be okay with that, doing the, the not so glamorous part of the job. Um, being very flexible is important for an animal trainer. Um, my, I have a set schedule, but the dolphins may not, you know, they may, may get sick, they may need extra attention, they may have a baby, they may, you know, and they have to eat every day of the year. So um, being able to be a little bit flexible with your schedule, it's important to prioritize, you know, your own mental health and your family life and find that balance. But being able to be like, I understand that I won't have every Christmas at home. They have to eat on Christmas. I will feed them on Christmas. <laughs> so we take turns. Um, being um, being a good team player and just being open-minded, I think, is something that we've found really valuable for our team. That right. 
we have set ways that we do things, um, but we are also good about being like, well, if somebody has a different idea, let's try to integrate that a little bit. So um, just kind of being in a dynamic team atmosphere is important because we're all 12, 14 of us taking care of the same animals that we have to, we have to be a united front um, and ebb and flow to make sure we're taking the best care of them. So I, um, I think just being, being pleasant to be around is, is certainly helpful. Uh, an employer to want to have you there because the days can be kind of stressful, especially if something's going on with the animals, you know, it, it, it can be a little bit stressful. So we're a little family around here. So being able to fit into a team is probably the most important important thing apart from getting a night, you know, getting your skills and getting your resume rounded out, doing a lot of volunteering, internships, that kind of thing, that um, that's what we've found anyway. So do you remember uh, for your shadow day at Van Buren, did you do something related to marine biology? I went to a vet clinic. Okay. okay. Yeah, because at the time I was like, I don't know what to do. I didn't even think of the zoo, you know, at that time. Um, because I, I just knew marine biology and I knew ocean. That's all I could think of. And um, going back, I would have I would have contacted the zoo and done something up there. Right. Sure. Yeah. So, as we start to wrap up here, a few more fun questions. Uh, what's your favorite mar marine animal? The dolphin, for sure. I I love all the weird animals. I love a little marine worm. I love coral. I love, <laughs> you know, I love plankton, but like, I don't know, there's something about these dolphins that get me every time. So they're just so charismatic. They're all so different. Um, they have favorite people, which I think is, is kind of fun. You know, we, we certainly don't have favorites, wink, but um, <laughs> you know, they have favorite people too. So just, to, they're just so funny all the time. And I mean, they really are like, uh, we always say that when I think of, so like my, my not favorite, favorite dolphin is Jet, you know, and, um, but I don't think of him as a dolphin necessarily. I think of him as Jet, like they become so integrated as, as part of your, your family, you're with them all the time that just having that little bond with him, it's hard to beat a dolphin. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> uh, what's the most difficult animal you've tried to train? That is a good question. A person, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all mammals. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that is a good question. I mean, I've had some like challenging behaviors that have made me have to think a little bit. Most of my training experience has been with the dolphins and, and seals and sea lions. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I guess I could think of the more challenging ones is... Um, with Jet, I had a behavior in mind that I wanted to train. I, I wanted him to um, flip upside down and take his tail and splash the audience in a certain way. And so I was just trying to like communicate to him how I would like him to move his body and what I think, how this would work. And we just weren't, we weren't getting it with each other. And so he just started to do his own thing different than what I was doing. And it ended up being better. Um, and I was like, that's great. So he trained me at that point. I was like, that's fine, because the outcome's still the same. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I've never really had the difficult, just challenging, but it's fun. It's kind of fun when it's challenging too. Right, right. Uh, what's the best part about living in Indianapolis? You know, I do love Indianapolis. We have, um, we have like, our downtown isn't huge, but it is very vibrant there's so much to do um even being in here in the midwest um we have like it's very walkable it's just a very nice we have a little canal that runs through downtown so we like to just go walk along that and there's restaurants and things like that um it's just a nice little little town it's overall pretty safe and it's close to to finley my parents still live there so it's you know within driving distance and um, but yeah, all my friends are here, so I like it. Very cool, very cool. So looking back now at all you know, uh, is there anything that you wish you had known as a teenager that you now know about your career? I think just knowing that um, doing internships early on in college is a good way to um, to figure out if this is something you really want to do. So if you think you want to 
take care of animals, the Toledo Zoo is a wonderful resource if you go to school nearby and they have internship programs. Um, and uh, depending on what school you go to, there are usually scholarships for those internship programs. So I didn't know about that until I had already completed some. Um, and, you know, once as far as preparing for the career, um, that it is, it is a lot of hard work. I don't make a whole lot of money, but I'm, I'm very happy. I'm fulfilled. Um, I enjoy my job. I've been here for 13 years now, I guess. Um, that, you know, it's, it, it's, it is a devotion, you know, of your life and time for, for not, you know, big monetary outcome, but it has been worth it. Um, but yeah, just kind of figuring it out early on because marine biology is such a huge field. There's so many different things that you can do. So um, meeting with your advisors once you get to school. Um, and you don't even have to go somewhere that has marine biology. I would say you can even go for a larger degree like biology and then kind of focus from there. Because like I said, there's just so, so many facets of, of science that you may find that what you thought you wanted to do may not be what you wanted to do anyway. Right. So just right. doing a lot of like exploration early on, I think is something that would be useful. It worked out for me because I am happy, but you know, you never know what you don't know. Right, 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 right. Well, Abby, I really appreciate you uh, giving up some time working with the dolphins and other animals. And I, I love that you have them swimming in the background. And it uh, just seems like a very relaxing uh, place to be today. So yes, uh, I hope that if any Van Buren graduates or in people in the community, if they ever visit the Indianapolis Zoo, hopefully they'll uh, try to touch base with you. And I greatly appreciate you sharing your insights about your career uh, as a marine biologist. So thank you very much. And I hope that the uh, the rest of this summer will be <clears throat> a good one for you. Yes, thank you. You too. Thank you for watching this interview with Abby Doan. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming interviews, please click subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for watching. And as always, remember the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.